friends and welcome to another episode of The Mess We Need. I don't know if that's what I'm calling this series, but that's what it feels like for right now because we are covering more episodes of Love is Blind. We have been given episodes five through seven now, five, six, yeah. I thought we were going to get more, but it's like, hey, we're going to stretch this out for as long as we can. It's like they're they're spoon feeding us because they know that we're addicts and it's like, no, da, 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 just, just a little bit. We got a baby bird it and it's... <sighs> I'm upset, but I love it. So the first four episodes of Love is Blonde this season were, of course, in the pods. We were meeting our people, meeting a whole bunch of like extra characters who don't really mean nothing to the main story. We met our main couples who were Izzy and Stacy, um, Uche and Aaliyah, Milton and Lydia, and JP and Taylor. Uh, so as you know, at the end of episode four... Uche and Aaliyah ended up uh, breaking up because Aaliyah left um, because of Lydia's BS. So we start episode five in the men's quarter. It's, it's kind of like replaying back what happened in episode four of like him going back in and being like, I, I she, she's gone. Like, I just don't know. They're just kind of having the conversation and Uche's like, there's got to be something I'm missing. Because in his head, all he's thinking is like Aaliyah had one conversation with Lydia and and she was like, yeah, I'm finna skedaddle. But I completely understand where Aaliyah is coming from because, you know, this girl is in your face all day, all night and just like waxing poetic about how amazing Uche is. And for information we learn later, I'm just not understanding why she was going so hard for this person. So while Uche is in his confessional, like talking and whatnot, he's saying like he just doesn't understand. He He's trying to get some more information. One of the like producers is like, do you want us to try to call her? And so they end up calling her. They talk on the phone and she was like trying to explain her side of it. Uche is really not even trying to hear her out, honestly. And she's just so like caught up in the emotion of it all that she's not really explaining everything very well. And I'm just like, like honestly both of y'all are starting to piss me off because this is right here like there's no more communication like I I felt like there was communication in the pod but honestly the way y'all are talking right now it's really not giving that there was ever any proper communication in the least bit so Aaliyah is saying that she talked to Lydia and felt smothered and Uche is asking Aaliyah questions but like it still just feels like he's talking down on her and I don't I don't like that because you know we team Aaliyah around here, so I need you to respect my girl. And I'm, I'm just not liking the way that he's talking to her. Uche is boiling the whole situation down to like, if you can't even be in the same room with someone that I've dated, then this isn't going to work out. My whole thing was at the time we're, we're watching this episode, you know, it's episode five, we only have a little bit of information, but it's more than just like, this is someone you used to date. Like, this is someone you had sex with a few months ago who you have a longer history with and who was in my face since she found out that I knew that y'all were a thing and has not stopped talking about you since. Like, and the fact that, that he just wasn't understanding that it was deeper than that and the fact that she couldn't even get out that it was deeper than that, the whole thing was pissing me off. And I was like, you know what? Just hang with the phone. I don't even want y'all talking anymore. No like, just, I'm I'm over it. Remember how last time I was like, I'm t- I am invested in their mess because for some reason it's just interesting me, but I don't want y'all to be together no more. Like that's just, <laughs> that's just how I feel about it at this point. Cause I was like, neither one of y'all are listening. Like, I feel like Aaliyah is like, she's, she'll, she'll have that. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yep. Type face, but she's, she's blank behind the eyes. Like she's not paying attention. She's checked out. Uche is so dead set on making sure that his point gets heard that he's not hearing that other people may have interpreted the same situation a different way and i was like you know what y'all need split ways so cut to lydia and milton meeting and there's a super cute um milton was saying like he shaved his his face like the day before so he was like feeling a little self-conscious because like he feels like his like facial hair makes him look a little bit older so now he feels like he really looks 24 with his like cut down hair i okay i feel like i said it last time i don't know if i kept it in but i feel like milton has potential like the the look he has going on like it's okay but i feel like if we like maybe like less hair on the on the top more hair on the bottom like milton is handsome we just need to rearrange some things like i'm a real good like person about potential like i can see like okay like they have the potential to look really good because i was team tyler james before everybody else was and i don't i don't like that everybody is now team tyler james like anyway 
<laughs> Lydia and Milton meet. Uh, they're all cute. We found out that Milton is six seven. So I actually cut it out last time because I, I was nervous that I was wrong. But I guess that he was six six. I was only an inch off. So like, shout out to me. But like, you could tell that that man was tall. Just from the way he was like sitting on the couches, you could tell he was incredibly tall. And they're all cute and all lovey dovey hands all over each other. Like, cool, cool, cool. So now that all of the couples who are going to meet have met, we switch over to vacationing in Mexico. In Mexico, we have Izzy and Stacy, we have JP and Taylor, and we have Lydia and Milton. And so we get like a little montage of them like being cute and like driving to, I guess, from the airport to the resort or whatever, just like them being all cutesy or whatever. And it, it's so funny because like uh, Lydia and Milton and Izzy and Stacy are pretty much like all like canoodled up, hugged up over each other. There is so much space between Taylor and JC. And you can already tell, like, it's just mad awkward. Cause like, I'm not saying that she got to sit in the middle, but like, even with them just sitting on separate sides of the car, like it can still feel intimate, even if y'all are still sitting in like the seat you're supposed to be in. But like, they're sitting in their seats and also like leaning towards their respective windows. So essentially trying to create even more space between each other. And I'm like, what's, what's, what's this? What's this body language happening? What is going on? And so everyone like gets to their rooms or whatever. And um, Taylor and JP are talking and like they still seem very awkward. Um, it definitely feels like Taylor is doing a lot of the heavy lifting and having the conversations. And JP is like answering questions, but it doesn't seem like he's very engaged in the conversation. Like I think that he likes her, but he is just not he's just not trying um and I just I tried to chalk it up to like you know maybe he's just a shy guy maybe he doesn't you know he's not a big talker like you know some people just don't really talk that much it went past awkward and got to like y'all good like eh, I, don't, I don't really know we see that Lydia and Milton and Izzy and Stacy end up you know doing the devil's tango uh, and Taylor and JP just talk. At first I was like, you know, it felt like they implied that nothing happened because like we're seeing like Lydia and Milton in the shower and like, um, uh, Stacy and Izzy are going towards the hot tub and like all this stuff. And they're just like hands all over, can't stop touching each other. And then we go back to Taylor and JP and they're just like sitting on the bed talking. I, I, at the time I was like, it feels like we're supposed to think that nothing happened, but like maybe the other people just didn't talk at all. Like, no, like literally nothing happened. Um, and they talk about it later on the beach. Milton looked at JP. He was like, he's like, looks like y'all been getting busy. And JP was like, not at all. I was like, oh, okay, so JP is feeling the type of way. So Taylor ends up voicing her concerns to JP about their lack of communication. And JP is just like, oh, well, you can talk. Like, I get that Taylor is more talkative than JP, but like it takes two people to have a conversation. So like, I am a very talkative person, but like, I'm not about to carry the entire conversation on my back. Like at least give me some answers I can work with to ask you some more questions if you're not going to act like, come on now. And then so finally all the couples meet up on the beach. Um, <laughs> Izzy was like, he felt like an asshole because he was the only person who didn't wear a shirt. And I'm just like, y'all are on beaches in Mexico. Like I, I be wearing nothing but bathing suits too. So I do not fault Izzy at all. When we get to the beach, you can tell that Milton and Lydia and Izzy and Stacy are for sure fully in that cupcake phase of their relationship where they are just all over each other, can't keep their hands off each other. And they're just like super cute and like giving you cavities. And then we flash over to JP and Taylor and they are just like watching. And it just, it's so awkward to watch because it's just like, we don't fully know what's going on just yet. But like we can feel that the tension in the air is thick and that they are just not feeling each other at all anymore. And I'm just like, bro, what in the world is going on? So Izzy decides that he wants to clear the air with Lydia um, and like make sure there's no bad blood. Cause like, I guess he just kind of like feels the type of way about how he could have possibly like hurt her feelings or whatever. But Lydia's just like, look, bro, like I really don't care. Like I got Milton. I love Milton. 
I'm not really concerned about anything you're talking about. So Taylor and JP try to have a talk again. And JP says that he feels like Taylor is the one that's like giving the cold shoulder. Um, and that's why it seems like JP feels so distant on camera. So like, I'm assuming they probably do have like some superficial talks when the cameras are off. Uh, but like later, like they finally have like a for real conversation. So like, that was like the first time they like actually, actually talk. So like, ain't no telling what they had been talking or just like sitting around looking at each other and her trying to have conversation had been looking like this whole time. Um, but to me watching, it really felt like neither one of them cared. Um, and I was just like, so what are we here for? And why are you in Mexico? And that is episode five. Episode six, we have a, another little montage of the couples. They have a couple of these like shower scenes that are just Milton and Lydia and Izzy and Stacy because the other couple ain't doing nothing at all. But like the shower scenes feel so intrusive. Like <laughs> there's one part where like, like most of the time it's like through the glass of the shower. You can see almost the entirety of Milton's back and they like stop right above a crack. And I'm just like, bro, like I don't need to see this. Like this is, this is not what I came here for. I just came here for drama. They are getting ready for like another uh beach day and I don't I guess everybody's doing their own like activities or whatever and we see Milton and Lydia are like getting dressed and Lydia wants Milton to wear uh black swim trunks to match her bathing suit and he's like no I want to wear these gray ones because I want to wear this pink shirt and I like how this goes together and Lydia gets in her like childish and stubborn bag um and she starts doing that like whiny like begging type stuff to try to get her way and Milton just like no and Milton has a lot of patience because that would have irritated me like that would have irritated me in the pod we would have never gotten this far but he's just like he's just like no I'm not gonna wear that and she does it please oh get you for me and, and he's just like no but I was so irritated listening to her and I was like can we please go to the next couple because I'm so irritated he eventually does put on the shorts that he wants to wear because he's a grown man and she is not his mama and I, I get like wanting to coordinate like that's cool but like there's one thing of like asking like hey do you want to wear the same outfit and then like demanding because after like the first like oh I think you should wear this so we can match and the person says no then it like it's not it's not an ask anymore Taylor and JP um ride an ATV out to like a picnic in the I want to say jungle it was denser trees where they went to. Um, and so like, we're just gonna, we're just gonna say jungle and go with that. Um, they try to have a conversation again. Again, it's like pulling teeth and you can see Taylor is just over it. Like t Taylor is trying cause she's like, I built this connection with this person in the pods. And like, now that I'm out here, like it's just nothing. And I don't know what's happening. Izzy and Stacy have a really cute moment, but like you can tell that she is cracking jokes to avoid like actual like deeper, deeper conversations. Um, like he'll try to like, hey, like let's have a for real conversation. And she'll just like say something silly to like make him laugh. And it's just like, I get that, you know, you want the fun stuff, but it's just like, okay, girl, like know when to flip that switch back off. Like, like your man trying to have a real conversation with you and you just like, let me, let me get my 15 minutes at the comedy catch. Like girl. And so finally Taylor and JP have an actual conversation to get to the root of what the issue is. And JP's issue is that when Taylor came out, she had on makeup. And he felt that she was being fake by having on caked up makeup, as he said. And he doesn't like when girls wear makeup and um, he really likes her face now. Because it was one point in the, in the episode earlier, he was like, he was like, oh, like, I really like your freckles. You should show them more making it sound like she's been wearing a lot of makeup the whole time when she even says like she had only worn makeup like for that he had only seen her in makeup once and so they have like a whole big argument about it and he's just like 99 percent of girls would love to hear that um 
they look better without makeup on and you're making it sound like I'm saying something bad da, 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 da. and I'm just like bro all of this over like you you lost almost your in like the entirety of your attraction to this woman because she had on makeup like what that just as soon as he said that I was like no no because I already like I have nothing against JP I just didn't care for him but this here I was just like oh yeah no you you can kick rocks you can you can actually kick rocks so Taylor ends up like getting her stuff together and sleeping somewhere else um they do like hug it out before she leaves but she's for sure like I'm gonna go sleep somewhere else we can talk about this in the morning and I love that for her like girl protect your peace so we see the couples getting ready to head back to Houston. So we kind of watch like a montage of Milton and Lydia and then uh, Stacy and Izzy. And then JP and, and Taylor finally end up having another talk in the morning. And Taylor said that she felt like the makeup thing was an excuse. Um, and I feel like she may have felt that JP just didn't like her physicalness but she also said like in one i think it was episode like one or two that she had gained weight over the pandemic and that she was kind of self-conscious about her body and then i feel like him being very cold and checked out probably fueled some of those insecurities she already had i feel like jp is that kind of person of like when he does finally talk he's telling you exactly what it is that's on his mind while it may not be the best thing I feel like what he's saying is exactly what it is. Um, so I feel like inflating it to like the makeup thing was an excuse. I feel like it probably like there probably was more added to it of like whatever drama he needs to deal with internally. Um, but I don't think it necessarily had anything to do with her physicality that much outside of the makeup. But what do I know? They end up breaking up. She gives her the ring back. Um, they go their separate ways. So when we get back to Houston, they first go to their Love is Blonde provided apartments. And then we start to see their respective homes. So Izzy and Stacy have a conversation about money. And if if it wasn't obvious, uh, Stacy comes from money. Um, I know she had talked at one point about her um her when her mom and dad got divorced um it was really messy because that there was a lot of money to split and you know had to decide where it went which i know in her mind that sounded like oh like this is just the facts of the situation but to me listening it was just like okay you ain't have to bring up that it was so much money that had to be split like girl we we get it we get it um and so she has she has a bands uh she drives is pretty much whenever we see them driving they're in her car and she's driving uh because i wouldn't let him drive my bands either <laughs> i'm just i'm just saying um but she has this uh cute little i guess it's a town hall type thing. it's really nice um but they talk about money because she's like you know i'm a homeowner and like you know what if like the hvac goes out and like this house has two of them so that's like twenty thousand dollars right there will you be able to help me with that and is just like is he kind of deflects and he's just like oh like you know money isn't an issue da, da, da. and then uh i think izzy says something about like going 50 50 on things and uh stacy's like but not on dates <laughs> and Izzy's like why Why not and Stacey's like no like you're supposed like the guy pays on the dates and you know to each their own um I don't I'm not a fan of 50 50 but I'm also rather I would rather like one day I like one day you pay one day I pay I would I would prefer that than like oh let's split the bill like that I don't uh, but like expecting like oh yes as my man I expect you to pay for every single date that we go on I don't know how I feel about that um just because sometimes I be want to do stuff and I'd be like hey I want to go do xyz in the third and I've planned it all out like especially if I've planned it out I've already prepaid for stuff like I don't know that <laughs> That is not, that's not the point now sorry going on the tangent Stacy is a girl of Louboutin and 
just luxury YSL everything um and Izzy and Izzy's background is more so like we couldn't afford to like travel all that much and take super fancy trips I only just got a passport recently so they are going to have some interesting conversations about money because Izzy does not seem very comfortable talking about money and Stacy is definitely like we need to have this conversation sooner rather than later so we end the episode with um Uche and Aaliyah having a little like lunch date or whatever they are meeting to have a talk and Aaliyah is saying that she still loves him and that she still wants him so episode seven starts and Uche and Aaliyah talk things out but Uche decides that they um are fully done they decide to you know just go ahead and stay uh split up and so that is the end of my favorite couple to watch. I'm very sad about it because I was here for Aaliyah. I really, really, really hope she comes to the reunion because I need to see the three of them all in the same place because that I, I need, I need it. I need it. So in this episode, Stacy goes to Izzy's apartment for the first time and Izzy shows Stacy his lost and found drawer in his bathroom, which is... I also found very weird. It felt like he was bragging about it. Like he said that he just thought it was funny. Um, and Stacy did not find the humor in that at all. Um, she's just like, why didn't you throw it away? And he was like, oh, I kind of forgot about it. But it's like, obviously you didn't forget about it because you, you brought it up and showed it to her. Like if you had forgotten about it, and she like opened the drawer and was like, what's this box full of earrings? And he was like, oh, snap, that's, that's my lost and found. Then, okay, cool. But she was like, oh, let me show you my lost and found. And she's just like, what? So I was on her side with that one. Where I declined being on Stacy's side was when we went to look in Izzy's cupboards. And he had like. So, uh, backstory back at Stacy's house, she had a lot of like glass and crystal, but at Izzy's house, he had like plastic plates and like disposable stuff like solo cups and whatnot. And Stacy felt the type of way because she was like, so if you cooked for me, you would serve me on plastic plates. And he was like, yeah. And <laughs> she was like, so when you've had date over, we've had dates over in the past, like you've cooked for them and serve them on plus where he's like I've never gotten any complaints and she was like in her feelings because I guess she feels like she deserves better than plastic and like I understand the sentiment of like wanting to feel special but it's not like he said you are unworthy of fine china it's literally the stuff that he has in his apartment that, that he's comfortable with. Like maybe he just don't like washing dishes that much. Like maybe he just wants something that he could just quickly just throw it away and be done with it. But she's like, Oh, you don't care. Cause you got, uh, you got Dixie plates and solo cup. And I'm just like greeting a whole, whole lot. They have a, a like a whole big fight about it because that the issue with the plates piled on top of the lost and found like say she's just fed up at this point she goes outside she sits outside you know kind of like gathering herself Izzy goes out there and sits with her and she's just like I want to go home I don't want to be here anymore because she's frustrated uh, so they they do end up like resolving it off camera we hear about it later when um Izzy and Stacy go to Stacy's family's house uh, we meet her dad her mom and her two sisters um, it's like they're kind of like talking, like asking, like how they knew each other was, you know, the one for them. And I like that they were asking Stacy questions as well and not just Izzy. Because like sometimes in those situations, it feels like they're grilling like the other party and like, well, my child is the saint and you're just this random stranger coming in that they met. So how do I know? And it's just like you doing a whole lot. Like I was in the same experiment with your daughter, like relax. Stacy's family seems well-meaning enough. Um, so I'm just like, okay, I won't pass too much judgment. Um, Stacy's dad does take Izzy aside for them to have like a little like guy talk or whatever. Um, it wasn't necessarily intimidating. It was more so like a real talk of like, um, essentially more so about money. Cause he's like, I know my daughter and she has very expensive taste. 
And like, I get that you may not have the same background as her, but you know, love needs a roof and love likes to fly first class. And like, I get what he was saying, but it was more so of a like, are you going to be able to financially take care of my daughter? Because whatever you can't take care of, I'm going to end up having to take care of. And that's fair. Cause my thing is like, I, I've never been a dad, but like, I can imagine of like, your daughter goes and gets married, but all of a sudden she's still asking you for the same stuff. And it's just like, what, what's he over there doing? Why are you asking me for stuff? So I, I, I kind of can understand where Pops was coming from. So then we have the mess that I've been waiting for. We have a semi reunion type get together with a lot of the people from the pods. What made me laugh was that, so anybody who was in the experiment but like didn't end up in a relationship they call them all the pod squad which which felt so rude to me because it's just it's just like look at these folks who ain't worthy of love over here like i know that's not what they meant but that's how i took it you just put pod squad like bro like and it was crazy because like some of the people who were there like i feel like in the earlier episodes um I feel like they tried to give them just enough of of context so that when this part of the show came around, we would remember them a little bit. Like there's like the super country dude. Uh, there's the black girl, Miriam, who I like completely forgot about. I even like had notes about her from last time. I was like, who is Miriam? Um, there's like Lydia's other friend, like St- Estefania, something like that. It's a couple, it's a bunch of people who we like saw in passing, but like they the producers were kind of like here's some people you should remember these people so you just they're they're gonna come back so remember these faces okay but yeah pod squad so izzy and stacy were like the first ones there uh and then once that some of like the pod squad got there and then like milton and lydia got there and then in walks johnny and stacy is not here for it <laughs> like her face immediately like it doesn't like fall completely like she tries to catch it but like you can tell that she's like and the mood is done i'm over it i don't want to do this no more <laughs> i was like whoo okay this is about to get real real fast and then what caught me off guard was that chris also came in like a little bit after johnny came in it's like the girls that johnny was talking to she was like she was like, you know that Chris and I are dating now. Chris. 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 I was rooting for you. I was talking about how much how much you loved yourself and respected yourself. It was like, I'm not gonna be your second fiddle. But and like and that you felt I was rooting for you. And they was talking about some they um met ended up meeting at the airport. So I guess they like recognized each other's voices. Uh, they ended up meeting at the airport and I guess when they finally saw each other, they were like, ah, I love you so much, whatever. Um, so they're dating and they, they seem happy enough. I still don't care. Chris seems like a nice guy. Johnny is Johnny. So Izzy and Johnny have a conversation and they hash out the whole, like Johnny had said two different things conversation. And then Izzy was like, he just wanted to give Johnny some advice because everyone thinks that she's uh that she's sketchy and uh who is everyone exactly uh because i know he probably thinks that she's sketchy stacy probably thinks that she's sketchy chris may have felt that she was being sketchy in that moment but he's dating her now so i don't think he feels the same way and i can't name nobody else um so who is everybody because again the producers don't show us every conversation so we don't know who all else was like oh yeah johnny sketch because johnny has friends there like she was over there there were girls that she was talking to and so i'm just like who was everybody johnny goes back to chris after she's done talking with izzy um and just immediately turns on the waterworks johnny was like izzy basically said that uh she was a piece of of boo boo <laughs> I'm just like are we are we, what that's not exactly what he said um and then izzy goes back to stacy and was like yeah i chewed her out i told her she was sketchy and i was like 
did either one of you attend this conversation that you had? Because I think both of y'all missed the point. And Stacey's like trying to, like Stacey's not understanding what's happening. She's just like, wait, what did you say? What did she say? Like, how did we get to this? Like, how, like, did y'all talk about me? And honestly, I felt like Stacey was asking some very valid questions because Izzy just came back over there like hype that he just like gave her the dressing down of her life and really he ain't do none of that and i'm just like what's what's actually going on right now because i'm confused and then this is the part that got me because i was not expecting it i was not expecting it uche walks in <laughs> and so like everybody's looking to turn around being like Ooh, what is what is this what is happening right now and so i was like oh the mess is about to mess i am ready for it so uche and lydia um, have a conversation and Uche is trying to get to the bottom of like what Lydia's actual intentions on joining the show were. Long story short, the conversation does not go well. Uche is like rehashing like old stuff from like when they were dating the first time. And he's like, he's like, do you remember like when uh, you went through my stuff, but like lied about it? And Lydia's like, I'm not a liar. Like I didn't go through your stuff. I opened a drawer. Um, and then he was like, no, remember when you, uh took a picture of my house you were driving by and she was like we were already talking and i happened to be in the area and like the more that they're having this conversation the more i'm just like kind of faltering and like granted i'm still not fully team lydia but like the more she's just like presented with whatever the situation is that uche saying and she's just like no this is what happened the more i'm just like uche you are losing a lot of favor with me like you lose like there's only so much that the biceps can do boss like you gotta have some personality with all the muscles as well like oh i don't know boss voices get raised and lydia pretty much is like yelling and screaming at this point because uche is just pretty much being a butt and trying to make lydia out to be like this horrible terrible person that we kind of already as the audience thought that she was because that's how it felt when she was being a terrible friend to Aaliyah. Uche was trying to drag Lydia through the mud and Lydia was like, what you're not gonna do is this because you're a narcissist, you're an a-hole, you're this, that, and the third. And I'm not gonna stand for it. And she starts like screaming for Milton. And no, actually before that. So she had gotten upset and kind of had like walked away. Um, and then Milton had came back. I guess he went to the bathroom or whatever. So like, who knows how long he was there because Uche came in, Uche came and grabbed Lydia. They went somewhere else and walked away. How long were you in the bathroom? Milton comes back out and goes over to the, uh, to the table. And so Miriam was like, uh, she was like, Oh, Hey, like your girl is in there, uh, having an argument with Uche. And so like <laughs> Milton goes in there and just like sits down beside them um and just kind of like just checking in on her and then he's like um <laughs> Lydia was like oh like where were you and he was like I was taking a piss at the urinal you could have just said you went to the bathroom like we didn't need all the details bruh um and then Uche is like hey like do you mind like if we just if we just talk like just the two of us and like the way he said it I did not like Uche's tone again because I'm already mad at Uche and the way that he was talking to Milton who literally is just trying to protect his his fiance from whatever verbal onslaught is coming and you're just like hey i'm trying to have a talk right now like can you leave us and milton didn't say nothing until lydia was like hey like it's good like you know like let us finish this talk and he's like okay and like grabs his phone and i was just like bruh like <laughs> milton you were so weird <laughs> so he walks off they finish the conversation and then that's when lydia that's when the voices get even more raised because like uche was like for real trying it and that's when Lydia was just like you're a narcissist you're this that and a third and I I can't do this so yeah she walks off she's like like out the door like screaming for Milton I don't know where he disappeared off to again that's the end of the episode we start to see a little bit of trailers for the next episodes coming up um and I I try not to get too much into the previews but like the previews we preview it and I need more mess and so a part of the next episodes that we're gonna get is Uche and Milton having a conversation and Uche tells Milton that Lydia got on the show to try to get back with him. <laughs> and 
while I think that could possibly be an option, I I don't know, but like who knows? Because I mean, she was in the pod on day one and was like, "Do you want to give it another chance?" But then in the conversation, she was like, "Well, you cheated on me." And then we have like the little like he was very like hypocritical and judgmental to Aaliyah when he cheated on me. Um, and it's just like, okay, so are you mad at him for cheating on you, or do you want to give another chance? Like, so we'll get all of that information next time. But for right now. This has been episodes five through seven of Love is Blind season five. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time.